Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 14th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got a couple of neat insights into Visual Basic for application code and obfuscation techniques to make it more difficult to, for example, detect a macro, or even just the presence of macros. Didier took a look at one particular Excel spreadsheet that Brad discussed a couple of days ago. And remember how I said that it's sort of surprising how these type of Excel spreadsheets still make it to the user. Well, a couple of these techniques uh, could potentially explain why some users are still receiving them. First of all, it looks like this particular document was purged. Now, purging means removing the performance cache from the Visual Basic for Applications code. Typically, you have sort of two parts. You have the performance cache, which essentially is sort of a compiled version of the code. And then you have the compressed source code. And of course, as the name implies, the performance cache is supposed to make the macro run faster, which of course isn't necessarily a big problem for an attacker. So they just remove uh, that part of the VBA code. The DA believes that this particular spreadsheet was created with a library called EP+, which is a C-sharp library that can be used to create Excel spreadsheets. Secondly, it turned out that the code was actually password protected. However, password protecting a Visual Basic for application spreadsheet doesn't really do much. It just sort of locks it from being edited in an IDE, but in general, the code is not encrypted or protected in any other way. So it's usually pretty trivial to just remove this password. So really more something prevents sort of accidental changes to the code. And then we got an interesting vulnerability in Mac OS that affects the latest and all patched version. Now, this vulnerability was originally discovered uh, actually almost two weeks ago on July 3rd. Hasn't really gotten a lot of press so far in part, I think, uh, because the issue here is uh, not quite that straightforward, but still quite severe. So first of all, to get started on a Unix system and Mac OS is Unix at its root. Each file has an owner and then of course access restrictions based on the owner of the file. Any user logged in on the system should only have access to their own files or files that other users made available to them by opening up uh, the permissions accordingly. With the one exception, of course, of root having access to pretty much everything. Now, the problem here is uh, the Apple file system snapshot feature. The Apple file system snapshots are essentially meant for backups. So you find them, for example, with a time machine and they contain more or less a copy of the file system, of course, with all the permissions intact. That means as a normal user, I may be able to mount one of these file systems. I can read files, but only if I would have read access to these files anyway. Well, enter the no owners option. This option essentially turns off the ownership, the user associated with a particular file. And now I have the ability to read any file on that particular snapshot. So this allows me to bypass the access control by just mounting any snapshot using the no owners flag. And on Mac OS with Apple file system, any user has this permission, not just root. Now with the latest version of Mac OS, Mac OS Catalina, Apple did introduce another sort of permission scheme where certain software does not have access to all files on a disk or um, some privacy restricted files, like for example, calendars and address books. So what Apple implemented now is that in order to read these snapshot files, the software that you're using, which would typically be terminal to mount uh, these snapshot files, have to have the full disk access privileges. 
And often to use terminal, which you often use to essentially uh, open different files and different locations on the file system, you often do assign it the full disk access right. So now you're back to the privilege escalation situation where a normal user can open any file on the file system by just mounting an Apple file system snapshot. Security researcher who found this Xava Fitzel uh, had a number of exchanges uh, with Apple about this issue. Doesn't look like Apple sees this as a big problem, so will probably not get fixed. Essentially, this is a privilege escalation vulnerability that could also be exploited by malware, of course, running as a legitimate user on the system. To exploit this, you need to be able to access the system. So disk encryption does not really help here. The only similar issue where a disk encryption does come to play is if of course your laptop is turned off, the attacker doesn't have any access credentials and would essentially remove the disk and then mount it directly to another system that is prevented with encrypting the disk. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, uh, this Tuesday is Patch Tuesday. So more about that on tomorrow's podcast. Bye.